All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan, and uh, I work for Torchbox, and I want to talk to you about Wagtail architecture options. So this talk will be less technical than you'd expect, and it's kind of geared more towards decision makers in companies, but also, hopefully, you know, uh, there will be little bits of, uh, little information nuggets that you can take away. I try. Uh, I guess we'll have to go with this. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, who am I? I'm a technical architect at Torchbox. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means I help lead on projects, on, on big projects, and also, you know, make the tough decisions on architecture, but also enable people sometimes a, a lot smarter than me to to do their job properly. Um, I'm also a Wagtail core developer, and I've been involved with Wagtail for, from quite early on. Uh, I started by taking meeting notes uh, and uh, publishing blog posts. So some of the earliest blog posts on uh, wagtail.org are essentially meeting notes from, from me. And I must have been doing something right because uh, I got accepted in the, in the, in the core meeting. Uh, and also, I, I am a maintainer for a number of packages like uh, Wagtail Media, Wagtail Headless uh, Preview, Wagtail Grapple, um, and a, a, a handful of others. So, yeah, so what it is this talk about? There we go. Ah. So, uh, this talk is about lots of acronym, acronyms like uh, SSR, SSG, SPA, ISR, uh, and so on, and hopefully uh, less uh, bad animations on slides. Um, so yeah, so um, let's take it one by one. Uh, you know, SSR, what is uh, SSR? That is, uh, w when we talk, so I try to distill architecture options into like three main categories. There are more that sit in between, uh, but I won't focus on these. So SSR, server-side rendering, and uh, this is, you know, the, the good old boring technology that we all know and it really, it's the simplest um, model. <laughs> Everyone does it, it's battle tested, it works, right? And what's really good about it, it uh, handles uh, every uh, kind of use case because it has had so much, uh, so much uh, run. Now, uh, next up we have um, SPAs, right? Single page uh, applications. Now. When I talk about SPAs, I kind of include uh, all, all, of the, all of the modern frameworks uh, like Nuxt.js, Next.js, Gatsby, and so on. And it's a bit of a stretch because they're kind of evolved from the, that concept of a you know single page application where everything happens into this one little uh, little page. Um, but uh, you know, doing star uh, star page applications or dynamic page applications doesn't quite have that uh, ring to it. So I'm, I'm going to refer to to SP to to, to that kind of uh, frameworks or uh, approach as SPAs. So, like, what what is behind it? Well, uh, you have a backend in this case, well, Wagtail that provides an API, and then you have a front end that consumes that API, and renders uh, your components, uh, the renders full pages, and uh, provides interaction um, for, for, for your site. Um, so where, where are single applications uh, good? Well, you know, you can tap into a wider developer community. So there's all the JavaScript-led uh, stuff is quite uh, kind of hot, you know, right now. Everyone does it, everyone li likes it. Um, so you can increase the, the pool of developers can, can, that can do it. There's also like a quite rich e ecosystem behind it, uh, which, which helps. So you can have nice, slick uh, interfaces, and you can have uh, smooth transitions, uh, faster page reloads, also dy uh, more dynamic uh, applications or, or websites. Uh, and it also taps into this concept of uh, cope or create once publish everywhere um, and the idea that you have a single source of truth that is your backend that provides the API 
and then everything else can be, you know, your uh, website, um, your application, your uh, publishing feed, uh, whatever it is. And that works quite well for, uh, for big publishers. Now, um, to continue on, on this, uh, you know, I talked about uh, modern frameworks like Nuxt and Next and, and so on. So uh, these applications can be um, rendered on the client side, meaning everything, all the logic happens on the client side, you load JavaScript and that takes care of, 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 of things on the page. Um, and that can, you know, that has its pluses and minuses that can sometimes be uh, faster, but also it, um, it can come with an overhead depending on the type of the application that you have. Uh, those applications can also render things on, on, the, uh, on, the, serv on the server side. So you, you saw with uh, the previous Next.js uh, um, talk, um, a diagram that kind of talked about that a bit. Um, some come with this kind of universal or hybrid rendering, which means uh, that they will render pages dynamically and then cache them uh, and kind of make them static, right? So that kind of incremental uh, uh, approach. And some of them, or quite a few of them, also do static genera generated. So what what's static generation, right? So uh, static site generation takes that concept of Essentially, you, you, you take uh, your data and you generate a static site, meaning good old plain HTML files that don't change and uh, creating chaos. Um, yeah, so, and you, you generate your site. It's essentially just that uh, HTML and CSS, and then you can deploy anywhere and it has like unbeatable performance because you, you don't have to re-render things. It's really easy to cache, and uh, as it says there, you know, it's quite cheap to host. Uh, and frankly, in my view, that, that, that's the holy grail of, of, uh, of, uh, of websites. Kind of, it's, we started with um, static websites and kind of we're sort of making that circle uh, again. Now, so kind of trying to visualize the different types of uh, these applications. So, you know, uh, server-side rendering, you have your audience, your client, that essentially talks to, to your backend and your backend generates the, uh, the, the resulting files and, and serves them back. Uh, with um, SPAs or, or the, uh, you know, the, 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 the modern frameworks, you have your backend, you have the front end, and then the audience audience talks to uh, mostly to the front end, but from time to time it will happen that they have to talk to, back to the back end and then do that uh, whole round trip. And then uh, with uh, SSG, essentially you have the, you know, you have your back end uh, that generates the static content and then your audience will always hit that, uh, that, that uh, static content. Now, one of the things kind of decision makers have to take in consideration is, uh, you know, is development costs. So you, if we take uh, server-side rendering as the baseline, uh, we, you know, what are the costs of the other uh, options? So, and this is like highly unscientific because there are many factors that, that, uh, that will influence that. But generally, uh, if, we, if we take the, the, the traditional approach at 1x, if you try to, if you do the static side generation, that incurs a slight, uh, a slight additional uh, development cost, be it uh, adding additional modules, for example, Lactel Bakery, or, you know, whatever your uh, uh, tool of like uh, Next.js or Nux.js has that capability, right? And then if you look at SPAs, uh, then the cost can increase, and th there are a variety of factors you know, how familiar your team is with the product, you know, whether it gives you all the capabilities uh, or not. Then uh, there, are, there, there come the, the hosting costs, right? So if we take uh, SSR as the, or uh, server-side rendered as the baseline, then hosting uh, statically generated uh, sites, it's like really cheap and really, really cheap. 
And then SPAs, the cost is higher because you have your back end which you have to host somewhere, but you also have the front end. Um, now, what are the uh, disadvantages of uh, static site generation? Well, if you want to have dynamic functionality, dynamic content, uh, such as, I don't know, search, pagination, and you have to do additional tricks uh, to, to uh, kind of account for that. Also, if you have a large website, then kind of you can have page build delays. Um, and if uh, you, you're also trying to paginate, that kind of exponentially increases the number of pages that it has to generate. So it's a trade-off that you kind of want to consider. So if it's a few hundred uh, pages, sure, that's, so that's gonna be fast. But if you have tens of thousands, it, uh, editors may not want to wait, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever it takes. Um, so what are the disadvantages for single pa pa uh, page applications? Well, there is an additional development complexity because uh, all of a sudden you have different uh, tool chains and different methodologies and different technologies to, to kind of account for. Um, and uh, also you kind of have a, an additional layer in terms of like the deployment, right? You have, there are different kind of ways of, of doing, uh, of deploying your, your back end and the front end. Um, so here are some like rules of thumb, right? So uh, if you want, like if the, your main like driver is security, go for uh, statically uh, generated sites because at the end of the day, what the public ever sees is a bunch of HTML files, they cannot do anything with it. Now, if you, um, you know, you, you want like a, the snazziest, the, the, the most modern experience, the smoothest experience and, and, and a lot of dynamic stuff, it probably SPAs are, are the thing to go. And then, uh, well, for everything else, uh, forms, A-B testing, personalization, um, and a, a handful of others, right? Go with the good old trusted technology, so server-side rendering. Um, yeah, so again, if you want to, and also if you want to uh, optimize for development sp speed, you know, go uh, with server-side rendering because that's good old trusted stuff. User experience and also just fancy, nice new stuff, uh, SPA, and then security SSG. All right. Um, now, I, I don't have time to go in all of the considerations because you have to think of, you know, SEO, does your uh, framework or does your technology allow you to uh, do a good SEO search, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the dynamic elements, and also previews, like does it solve previews easily or do you have to jump through a lot of hoops? Anyway, the main question probably a lot of people are asking nowadays, like, well, should I go headless? And it depends, really. Uh, and you know, our recommendation is to, to start with uh, server-side rendering because that just works. Uh, but while you do that, you want to like, enable the APIs and kind of build something with the, with the APIs with, the, with a view to potentially ex expand to you know, more dynamic single-page applications. Now, and really SSG is that holy grail and if you can and if it m matches uh, what you need, then go for SSG. But your mileage may vary and you should kind of look at this and, and see how that fits into your context. You know, your experience with the different technologies, the resources that you have uh, and you know, the, the, what, what the developers can and want to do. Uh, oh yeah, uh, one more thing. So you've ha heard it mentioned earlier, but we, like our team put together a thing which is called Are We Headless Yet? Uh, Are We Headless Yet? And it's a status site that kind of keeps track of whether Wagtail is headless ready uh, or not. And that's available at areweheadlessyet.wagtail.org. Uh, please go, there are uh, a, a few areas, we'll keep updating that, uh, post links to relevant issues, uh, blog posts, news, and, and so on. Um, that's all, thank you very much. Thank you.
if there's a question. Um, so we've got a question from online from Kyakin. Um, would it be re uh, would it be realistic to consider static site generation strategy for a site with 150k plus unique pages, where dozens of unique pages are created every day, and use large news sites, for for example? Uh, again, it depends. Uh, you know, there are. You know, what's, what's the build time uh, for that? What other capabilities you are you adding to, 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 to your site? If it's just like a, an archive of things, sure thing. If you want dynamic pagination and, and uh, yeah, more than a search, you have to put the, you know, the work into making that happen. And sometimes that's not realistic. Um, but the options are there. There's, uh, you know, Django Bakery, and uh, that, that will, or Wagtail Bakery, which is built on Django Bakery, that will allow you to do this. I know that uh, Mozilla used to run in a, uh, a statically generated website for, I think, MDN, so Mozilla uh, Developer Network, uh, but they eventually switched to, to good old uh, server-side rendering because of pagination and search. So again, it, 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 it can work, but it depends on how, how much you want to invest in, in it. Yeah, I'm just wondering um, if you ever thought or would advise on combining the options. For example, generating static pages for, no, not much visit, like archive pages, and using server rendering for well the difficult stuff like search, pagination. Almost every site would want that, I think, for, for bigger sites, so. Uh, yeah, uh, so for example, um, we worked with, uh, with uh, with JPL and uh, they have the main JPL website is a headless website. It's built with Max.js, and some of the dynam dynamic areas there, I kind of use a hybrid approach where we kind of piggyback on 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 on, uh, on uh, in Elasticsearch, for example, to to build to kind of to have that hybrid approach where with uh, more statically generated content and, and more dynamic uh, areas of the, the website. So it's it's one of the many possibilities. I kind of try to try to distill these in like three main, but there's everything in between. And um, people do that, right? People people will do that. And there are ways, um, and sometimes we even with like with Next.js, you saw there's incremental uh, uh, static uh, rendering, which kind of does that. Uh, so there are ways to, to, to go around it. Any further questions? Uh, so this is more just one about how to, uh, from John Esther, about how to approach static site generation in the first place. So um, they asked, how should I make my blog static such that the user never hits the database backend but only accesses the static content? Um, well, I mean, again, my answer will be it, it depends. But yeah, uh, try, uh, you know, you can try Wagtail Baker, for example, and that will bake your Wagtail site into a, like a st static one. Uh, and then you can uh, put in some, there's like the Lunar JS or other services that could allow you to search things. Did I get that right? Um, yeah, I'm I think in, in, in a lot of cases, right, you also want to have a degree of uh, experimentation and play um, because you can you cannot make a choice unless you've tried uh, several of the options and you kind of know what's involved in them. And I I wouldn't kind of recommend to, pe to people to kind of go, yeah, go jump and do headless or 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 I don't know even uh, server side rendered you know with uh, with Wagtail if if your strengths right, are in, in, in a different area. So try to play to the strengths, to, to your strengths, to, to your capabilities. 